I'm Commander Mark, and this is the Secret City, a place of fun and fantasy and adventure. On this program, I'll show you how to draw in three dimensions using the magic word overlapping. First, we'll draw a barrel full of apples with the apples overlapping one another. Now, if I could get three of those apples out of the picture, I'd, I'd juggle them for you, <laughs> okay? Then, we'll draw overlapping cans of spinach. Now, I thought I'd use spinach cans because I know you like spinach so much. Film animator Fred Miles is here today. He's going to show you some puppets, clay, and a film process called pixelation to create animation. I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club today, so Zebtron will show you how easy it is to join. Here's what you need to follow along today. Your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, and your guest book to take some notes on Fred Miles' animation and how you can do animation at home. You gather those materials, and I'll be right back. So you're all excited and you're enthusiastic and you're ready to learn how to draw today, right? Enthusiasm is really important when you're trying to learn how to draw because it helps you get excited and helps you get into the drawing. Now we're using that magic word overlapping. The apples are overlapping and the cans of spinach are overlapping. Now that magic word helps your pencil with that pencil power and it helps you become more controlled over that flat piece of paper and conquer that flat piece of paper and draw in 3D. Now loosen your hand up, get yourself all revved up and excited and let me see, we'll start the the barrel of apples right around here. Loosen your hand up. You want to do some warm-up four shorts and circles to begin? Okay, we'll do a couple of those first. Let's do a four shorts and circle. Now these are really easy, these are like squished cigars, almost like hot dogs, but they're pointed on the end. And let me see here. We'll draw another one. Now these are good four shorts and circles. Now let's go for the real drawing here. We'll draw that barrel full of apples. Draw a nice large four shorts and circle. And then we'll make a double circle inside here. Now, now watch when I draw this. This is kind of tricky. You start right here. You leave a space at the end. You come in, and then you're very close to the edge again. You see how that's kind of a, a wide rim right there at the very end? That may helps that four shortening really stand out. Same thing on this side. Leave a space at the end. See that? You come in right along here. Darken in that four shortened rim. And now for the barrel, you can come straight down and make a cup if you wanted to. Or you slant these lines out, we'll make a barrel, and you can put some apples inside there. Or if you don't want to draw apples, you can draw something else if you want to. Draw the barrel side there. Draw the light guidelines here, and then darken in the guidelines of the sides of the wooden barrel. And we'll draw some wooden slats coming down, and we'll tie the slats together with wire. Curve the bottom more than the top is curved, because it's below your eye level. So the bottom is curved just a bit more. Make sure it's curved. Okay, now draw a vertical line. This is a vertical line straight up and down matching the side of your paper. This is our first crack or our first slat and then we'll draw two more lines. Now watch how these lines get a little more curved as they, as they move away from you. This is slightly curved. You Notice know, it's curving in this direction. It follows the side of the barrel and this is curved a lot and you see the end over here is foreshortened. Curve this just a little bit and this is even more curved. See it matches the side even closer. This is really a good exercise to loosen up your hands and follow the contour, the shape of that barrel. All right, now let's tie the slats together with a piece of wire. I just like this real smooth drawing. Curve it, slant it up, connect the wires. This holds the slats together. If you want to, you can put a little hole right here, a little drainage hole for the water when you rinse the, the apples off inside. We'll start the apples by drawing one apple right here, one apple right here, and now we'll use that magic word, overlapping. When you draw an object, and then you draw another object behind that object, you're using overlapping, and that near object will look closer to you. doesn't matter if it's larger or not, because of overlapping. These two apples, I'm going to give you the appearance or the illusion. These two apples are closer by, now watch this, overlapping. See how this apple looks like it's further away? 
and this apple looks like it's further away and I'll even draw a little stem so you can tell that they're apples and then this apple is further away and this apple is further away and you just do this as much as you want this is also a good idea for cobblestones if you want to put some cobblestones in your secret city or in one of your drawings that you're creating cobblestones you look like a whole row of apples going back into the distance and then you can shade the left side of each one of these apples to make it a little more detailed all the way down and if you wanted to when you shade the barrel you can use these slats these guidelines on the slats as guidelines for your shading to help you blend your shading nice and dark Commander on this slat. Commander Mark. Hi Zebtron. I have brought you some overlapping <laughs> apples. Oh yum you brought me some breakfast huh? <laughs> no you probably want me to juggle these huh? You mentioned that you could juggle them and I would like to see you do this trick. You like putting me on the spot huh? Uh, Zeppelin, do you see overlapping being used right here? Yes, Commander. Yeah. Like the apples I am holding. I'm trying to get out of juggling them. But you really want me to? Okay. First of all, you have to define overlapping for me, then I'll juggle. Overlapping is one behind the other. Right, and it gives the near apples the appearance of being closer to you because of overlapping, right? Yes, Commander. Now, juggle, please. <laughs> you really want me to do this? Please, Commander. <laughs> okay, now, if I drop them, just pretend it's funny and laugh, okay? All right, ready? Just back up and get out of my way. Over the top. Pretty neat, huh? Oh. Curve the bottom, overlap, see the four shortened circles higher up on the paper. Now, they don't have to be any smaller, vertical lines, they just have to overlap to give you the idea that these cans are going back into the picture. Commander, can you juggle spinach? Oh, well, sure, you can juggle anything. Anything's possible. Of course, we're in the secret city, right? Commander? See how I'm overlapping these? I think. I will go and find some other things that you can juggle. <laughs> okay, Zetron. I'll see you later. Look at this. Blend it. I'm going to let you shade these two, and I'll shade this one. And I'm even going to let you finish this by yourself. Remember, move up the bottom and draw that line straight down. I'll shade this nice and dark over here. Darken the... Now, this will set this can back if you nice and dark against the edge. You see how that bright line? And then I'll put a little spinach label on here, because I know you love spinach, huh? And then I'll draw another spinach label. See how this curves with the contour of the can? Now, don't draw these labels just going straight across like that. Curves with the contour of the can, curves with the contour of the can, and then there's the S. Blend of shading. I'll use my finger again here. And I like to get nice and dark and lighter and lighter. Nice and dark and lighter and lighter. Nice and dark and lighter and lighter. Did you shade that correctly? I gave you a few seconds to see if you can get a hit of me on the shading. Put a cast shadow on the ground. Shading is right here in the shadows, cast onto the ground, cast shadow right here, blend that so it's nice and smooth. Now don't make them come straight down, it'll make the cans look like they're on a slab of ice or something, some water. And then I'm going to draw another road back behind here. You can put as many rows as you want. I'll draw the vertical lines, I'll let you shade these by yourself. Draw, 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 practice your drawing, dump all of your enthusiasm into your drawing, and remember the magic word today, which is overlapping. Commander Mark would like drawing to become as popular as ice cream sundae. I have never tasted ice cream, but I would like to taste the flavor of pistachio, raspberry, and mustard. 
I do not understand why you can only eat ice cream on Sunday, but I do know that you must join the club. To join the Secret City Club, all you need to do is to draw a picture and send it to the commander. This week's drawing is of an inhabitant for the moonscape. I have examples of some drawings. This is a club member, Sean. Sean has drawn an inhabitant. This inhabitant wears a shield over its body, and it is also holding a shield. It has knee pads like Zeptron. In the drawing, there are also many different kinds of helmets. It is very nice. Sean also drew another picture. This is a picture of a flying creature. It has a huge, huge wingspan, and the creature is flying in front of one of the several moons from our planet. I would like to take a ride. This picture is of a space station. It is by Kilber. It is very nice. Send your completed drawings to the Secret City Club, Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94556, the United States of America, the world, the universe. Hi, I'm Fred, and I'm a film animator. Artists like myself create films by bringing life to objects or drawings, and the way we do that is by giving them the illusion of movement. After all, if something moves around, it seems to be alive. Now, the way we do that is, at least in the case of Elmo, is by making a whole series of drawings of Elmo, each one slightly different than the one preceding it, and by photographing them one at a time and projecting them on a, you know, through a, a movie projector, it gives the illusion of movement. Now, here in the Secret City, I've had a lot of fun drawing Elmo and having Elmo teach us about the magic words. I hope that you get involved in animation, either at school or uh, at home with your friends, because just as Commander Mark helped us to improve our drawing skills and we learned to be more aware of, of the world around us, of how things look and how things are put together, so will we, when we start animating, become more aware of how things move, whether it's a person walking down the street or a dog running or maybe even something only in your, in your imagination, such as an elephant sitting in a bathtub. So all of these things really help to increase our awareness, and uh, certainly that's good. Good animation uses relies on exaggeration. And in the case of Elmo, I draw Elmo as if Elmo was a rubber ball. The, uh, if Elmo falls down, kind of squashes. When Elmo uh, runs fast, he stretches out. And here's an example of what happens. Let's say Elmo is going to jump in the air, a very physical jump. This is Elmo when he starts. You see how nice and round his body is. First then, Elmo scrunches down, ready to jump. See how fat his body becomes and his head is down and his, his arms are up. Finally, Elmo leaps into the air. See how his, his body has become stretched out, his, his arms and his legs are stretched out. Let's look at that again. So here's Elmo normal, scrunches down, and he jumps up. I think when you, when you look at other films, good animation...
Hello, Fred Miles Animator. Hello, Zebtron. I am very much like your little character. Elmo, how? Yes. How's that? Because I never get any ice cream either. <laughs> well, someday Elmo will get ice cream. Maybe you'll get some too. I hope so. What is this? Well, I'm showing today how you can make animated films without having to draw. You do not have to draw? What do you call that? That's called pixelation. I thought that was a musical instrument. No, Zebtron, you're thinking of piccolo. Oh. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> That's okay. Let me tell you, explain how we do this. We take an object, it could be a, b a ball of clay that you can shape in different things, or it could be a puppet that you can move the arms and legs around. Can you take some ice cream? Ice cream? Well, I don't know. It's a pretty slow process. I think I would probably eat the ice cream before I finished filming it. Me too. <laughs> anyway, you can take something as silly as this work glove here and make it move across the table. Oh, let me try. Let me try. Okay. No, no, Zebtron, that's much too fast. Try a much smaller movement. Okay, I'd film it. Film it. Film it. That's very good. I understand. <laughs> Say, in fact, I have a film that I know you're going to enjoy that shows an example of how things... Uh, I can make a movie of things using pixelation. Good. I would enjoy seeing that, but... I have some really exciting, adventuresome drawings in the gallery today. Now, what these kids did is they took lots of enthusiasm and they poured it into their drawings and they came up with some excellent drawings. And I'll show you that in a second. If you take that same amount of enthusiasm, lots of enthusiasm, and you pour it into your drawings, they'll just get better and better. Just, they'll get excellent before you even know it. Now, let's look at some of the examples. This is Forrest's drawing. Nice shading. He used overlapping. He used size. The windows in a nice stairway. Very simple. I like that structure. Let's look at another drawing. Now here's Leroy. Look at this. He didn't leave one inch <laughs> empty. Just incredible, intricate design. These are some really neat ideas for you to use in your secret cities. The pillars. Look at the windows. Look at the holes. The manholes in the floor. The ladders. The waterways. Fantastic drawing. Good job, Leroy. Look at another one. A little simpler. I like the open space here. This is by Greg. You see the surface. You see size. You see foreshortening. Try to pick out the magic words when you see them being used here by these kids in these drawings. Let's look at another one. Okay, this is by Joe Ring. Look at the roadway winding around the tubes. The airplanes in the sky. The flags. You look for size. You see where size and overlapping is used here? Beautiful drawing, beautiful shading. Look at the archways, the grass. You put some kind of a park inside there. I really like that idea in the mountains in the background. Use these ideas for your secret cities, too. Are you ready to add something exciting and different to the secret city universe? I'm going to draw some stalactites and stalagmites. Do you know what the difference is between stalactites and stalagmites? Well, I just found out today. Fred Miles, our special guest, he came up to me and he told me this neat little, what is it, some kind of a sentence to remember these um, stalactites and stala stalagmites by. That's a tongue twister. Now, the stalactites hang tightly to the, the ceiling, and the stalagmites might grow up to reach the top of the ceiling. Isn't that interesting? So draw some stalactites using that magic word overlapping. You see how this one comes down, it looks closer, and it overlaps in front of the back one. I'll use overlapping one more time here. And now watch this. You notice how I came down in this area. I overlapped underneath the rock. Nice texture. This is a good idea for some of your drawings. And I made a tunnel going into the stalactite. This is a really interesting idea, and you can do this as much as you want. I'll do it one more time. In fact, I penciled in here, and I even draw it nice and dark. Draw a tunnel. And what I do when I draw a tunnel is I draw overlapping. I draw a line down. I come across in direction 7. I draw a tunnel entrance. I continue the direction seven line around. And I always like to have a thickness on the other side to create that doorway effect. And then I want to have some grass or foliage hanging over the end and droop it down. It gives it a little more character and a little more excitement. Remember, I'm talking about enthusiasm, so this is a little more 
enthusiastic way to draw if you hang that down. And plus, when you shade, <laughs> I always get enthusiastic when I add shading down here. You know, Benjamin Franklin, do you know what Benjamin Franklin said once? You know who he is, right? The great inventor. Well, Benjamin Franklin said enthusiasm will help you conquer anything, any goal you set out for yourself. So if you really want to learn how to draw and you're enthusiastic about it, man, oh man, you'll learn how to draw in no time at all. You know, draw some grass tufts here. This is going to be a stalag tight hanging down. See, I kind of ignored my pencil line there because I wanted to make more of a stalag tight. Then I would overlap this. See, overlapping, it makes this one look a little bit closer to you than that far one. I'll draw another doorway. more grass tufts hanging over the side. See how this kind of droops over the edge? Darken the inside of each of these doorways. And you can make as many of these stalactites as you want. It's even fun to make stalagmites coming up out of the ground if you want to make little peaks. The water dripping builds up all those particles down there. And then we'll draw some more stalactites hanging here using overlapping. And I wanted to put some more archways and some more doorways in the side here. So here's the planetscape. Here's the entrance into the underground planet. And then here's the underground planet. And this is the ceiling of the cave that the under planet inhabitants live in. And then later on, I'll draw the floor of the under planet. Nice and dark. See, isn't it fun to use your imagination and invent this little creation? Now let me add some shading to the left side here. Blend it across. Lighter and lighter as it moves across. Nice and blended. Now, if you're using pencil, you can use your finger and blend it across. You know, there's an artist that uses some really interesting shading techniques, and when he builds his inhabitants, and he has really interesting environments that he builds, and his name is Roger Dean. You might have seen some of his artwork on the cover of records or something. Commander Mark. How are you doing, Zevtron? I have brought you something else to juggle. <laughs> you mean juggling the apples wasn't enough for you, Zevtron? You said you could juggle anything. I, I can juggle just about anything. Uh, you have me. Can you juggle spinach? <laughs> Zebtron, you really want me to juggle spinach? Oh, you said you right. could. All right, I'll give it a try. But, you know, usually I need more solid shapes to juggle. It's like I, I would need rocks, round rocks or something. You want me to juggle spinach? All right, I'll give it a shot. Let me see here. Oh, you gave me so many pieces. Why don't you take two back and make an effort here? <laughs> I'm making a mess in the secret city. We have tossed salad now on the ground. All right, you want to see me juggle spinach? Oh, okay. Zeptron, next time here, why don't you take that? You can have some lunch. Next time, bring me some more solid objects to shade. You should to stick drive to it. apples, Commander. See, I started saying shading because I think about drawing all the time. I'm going to shade the left side here. Shade the left side here. See, if you had those cans of spinach, I'd probably be able to juggle those. What are you doing, Commander? See, I'm making some stalactites hanging from the inside of my underplanet. And I think what I'll do is I'll make this the edge of the underplanet. This will separate the ender planet from the planet uh, surface, and I'll draw a waterfall here. Right now, I'm going to add shading to the inside of these stalactites. See, so make sure that it's nice and blended. Is it very cold there? Um, well, it depends if it's summer or winter. Right now, it's a nice winter day, so it's pretty cold. Nice and dark. And then you know what I wanted to do is I have to be consistent. You see. Right here, I started the scribble technique, and I just realized, I go, uh-oh, I'm not being consistent. I started part of the um, stalactite shapes with this cross-hatching, so I should be consistent, right? You, you didn't point that out to me, Zeptron. I am sorry, Commander. <laughs> That's okay. Next time, maybe you can see it sooner than I did. See what I'm doing right here? I'm drawing lines going down in this angle. Then I'll come through, and I'll draw lines coming across the opposite way. This is called cross-hatching. Cross-hatching. Isn't that interesting? That looks very nice, Commander. And I'll go across the other way, too. Add a whole tone to all the underground. I wanted to make it nice and dark where the rocks sit against each other. It makes it really interesting. It makes it look like they're really, they've been formed together over years and years of development in the Earth's crust. Okay. Add a tone all the way down, cross hatching the tone. And I think I'll draw some more detail right here. I'll draw this hanging down in front, draw the doorway, draw the interesting little... That's fun when I draw the little grass tufts hanging over there. You know what this does? It makes What's me a little more good? enthusiastic. You know what the definition of enthusiasm is, Zebtron? I am not sure, Commander. Cindy. 
<laughs> Cindy's a good definition of enthusiasm. She comes in here, boy, I can't even stop her. She just talks so much. I never talk to her. <laughs> well, I don't understand why you and Cindy don't get along better than you do. She is very enthusiastic. Well, she just likes picking on you sometimes because you're different than she is. I don't know why she does that, though. See, what I'm doing right here is I'm making it nice and dark. Draw, draw, draw. Use the magic word for today. Overlapping. I'll see you next time. Zebtron, take this right here. Commander Mark says anyone can learn how to draw, and Maryland Public Television now offers a 72-page book, Learning to Draw with Commander Mark. It's full of drawings and illustrations of the seven magic words. And corporate art services.